All right, Brian, let's do some film breakdowns here. Been doing this for every commit in or every recruit rather, because they're not just commits. They are future Oregon Ducks in the 2024 recruiting cycle. A couple of guys at the linebacker position, at least that's where they're listed. Why don't we start with the guy who, who definitely is going to play in that spot? One of the higher rated defensive recruits for Oregon in this 2024 class, Braden Platt out of Yelm, Washington. He's one of my favorite kids to watch film of, and I know the following is very mean, but I, I, I thoroughly enjoy this. He's playing against kids that have no business being on the field with him. And some of the collisions, they're, 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 they're significant. Let's just put it like that. It, it, it's like a Mack truck hitting a Yugo. It, it's pretty bad. And he is just physical with everything he does. I personally like his running back film even better because you can tell by the angles some of those kids take to hit him. Did they really want to do it? Did they, did <laughs> I they really? I wouldn't. Platt is 235, 240 as a senior in high school, and it looks like he's 30 years old. So he's just one of those kids that's really developed, and he's taking the weight room very seriously. And he is down. He reminds me of John Riggins. Like, that's that would be the comparison. That's before your time, early 80s Redskin. Like, he was an all pro, Super Bowl winner, and all that. And he had no fear. This guy's in that, that realm. Now, I assume the Ducks will play him at middle backer. But I think he'll play some defensive in and outside linebacker and move him around because he's just a football player. He is a blast to watch. Physically, though, like I don't really know what the hell they're going to do with him in the weight room program and, except just increase his endurance. He's kind of maxed out. Like This is who he is. It's very, very rare that I say that about a player. But he took to it early. I'm guessing his dad or somebody in his family is into lifting. But there's nowhere else to put muscle. So unless he wants to move to D-line, that would be the only other thing that he could do. So – instinctive, powerful, and downhill, brother. That is a very powerful young man. Yeah, when you combine those traits and you think about the, the running back component as well, he reminds me of Noah Sewell. That, that's kind of my, that's my comp for him, uh, who had a great career with Oregon, of course, multiple all Pac-12 selections. I think he was all freshman and then uh, all Pac-12 second team two years in a row, RIP Pac. But I, I, I think that Platt is someone who comes in, he is – very big and when you look at the way oregon has run this 425 brian typically they've got one linebacker on the field who's a little bit quicker and one who's a little bit bulkier to play against the run now justin jacobs is somewhat of a combination of both but jeff bossa is definitely a little bit quicker he used to play safety and jacobs is you know at least a little bit more of a bruising linebacker on the field and then you know the next combination last year was often Devin Jackson Jamal Hill and those guys both had a high end speed frankly at the linebacker position but I look at Platt and I see a little bit more of that kind of run stopper position how do you think he holds up in coverage that is the million dollar question because scheme is everything is he covering slot receivers no but you've got to put him in a position not to have to if they can, and I know they're not going to advertise this, if there is a stoppage in play or anything else and it's a passing down, either he's in and blitzing or he's out. That's my guess. They don't want him covering people. He's 240, 250. How many running backs is he really going to cover? But at the same time, he's athletic enough to at least be competitive. And you can't win every battle. The offense carries the advantage now because they can go 13 personnel and still be in five wide. Tight ends are different than they used to be. So – you're going to get exposed once in a while, but he's also going to make plays for you in the backfield that other guys don't on first and second down. So it's a pretty good trade-off. So the other guy I want to talk about is one of, if not the most interesting in that, I mean, there's a big question mark of sorts next to his name in this recruiting class for the Ducks, and that's Kingston Lopa, who is listed, uh, you know, like Braden Platt as a four-star linebacker, but I don't know, other than having the LB next to their name on 24-7 sports, how much these guys really have in common as recruits. And Lopa, I'll read you what uh, Greg Biggins of 24-7 sports said about him. Quote, Lopa's one of the region's most versatile players, could even play three to four different positions at the college level. He started safety and receiver, but probably projects best as an outside backer who could even grow into an edge rusher down the line. Haven't seen a guy like that before. I think you 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 look at someone who played safety, 6'5", Oregon fans are going to look at, at, at Brian Addison, but I'm thinking yeah. of Isaiah Simmons here, 
maybe not quite as physically freaky as Simmons was when he was at Clemson, but you don't see a lot of players that get listed, especially coming in as true freshmen, as, hey, he could play at any single level of the defense. He could put on weight and play edge. Yeah. He could have some weight, play linebacker. He could play safety. I don't think they see him as, as a corner, but what do you see from him? I see him as a safety that'll be a strong safety and he'll be a rover, kind of that hybrid spot. I don't see the edge. Uh, Biggins has been around forever and he's great in the business, but I don't think he's going to gain the weight to be a true edge. That doesn't mean he can't be a guy that comes off the edge on a blitz, but like when I think edge, I mean, that means a guy has to be able to play the run on first and 10. No way in hell he's going to play edge on first and 10. Uh, he's not going to be 230. That's pretty much like the minimum you'd have to be. He's like 190-ish. Yeah, 190 is what he's listed at on 24-7. So let's say he's 200. That would still be 30 pounds to gain, and that would be a few years. And he's a he's a hitter. He needs to learn to wrap up more. He's too much of a shoulder hitter right now. But he can run. He's instinctive. And he's good in open field. So I would, I would put him overhang slash hybrid and strong safety and until he outgrows it. I mean, there could be certain circumstances. They're playing five wide. Some team in the Big Ten, not that many of them do it, maybe Ohio State. He plays some linebacker. That's different. There are teams like that. I mean, when Drew Brees was at Purdue, teams would put corners and safeties at inside linebacker because they never ran the ball. And they would just play with all DBs. You could do something like that if you went up against a team like Ohio State and was just throwing it everywhere. But otherwise, let him play downhill from strong safety or the hybrid spot. Yeah, I, I think Brian Addison's a pretty solid comp who's a good player for the Ducks. You know, he started on offense and, you know, Lopez got a little background on, on offense yeah, playing the tight end cool. position uh, as well. I don't think that's where Oregon wants him to play. And, you know, that nickel star position that Oregon's got on, on defense, sometimes it's a corner, sometimes it's a safety, sometimes it's, you know, Brandon <laughs> Johnson, the transfer coming in from Duke is literally listed positionally as a nickel. Uh, at least that's what he played over there with, with the Blue Devils. And I think that that's a really tough position to find because you need someone who is a defensive back that's just prolific against the run. I, I think the best guy in, you know, the five defensive back scheme that we've seen Oregon run for really quite a while now, going back to the Andy Avalos days, Javon Holland is the best that that I've seen with the Ducks. Like that, that's the gold standard right there because – Holland was, you know, someone who could blitz a little, but he was such a sure tackler and he could also have great coverage skills over the top. He played, you know, at the back end of the defense really well. So you talked about the tackling component with, with, with Kingston Lopa. Does that make you think he's probably not someone that plays as a true freshman? Oh, Brian, Brian just, just hopped out. So Brian uh, might have had to go, um, but Oh, oh, Brian, Brian, Brian hopped back in. There's Brian. We lost Brian for, what happened. for a hot sec. I thought you were ditching us early. But uh, <laughs> back to Kingston Lopa here. Do you think that, you know, his need to work on, on form tackling a little bit makes it harder for him to play as a true freshman? Absolutely. They want guys that are going to bring you to the ground. He's always just hammered people. It doesn't work that way at the power four level. There are running backs in the Big Ten that will laugh as they run down the sideline. So, yeah, he's going to have to work on that. He's been the bigger, stronger guy, but that'll take care of itself in fall camp. It's no big deal. Brian right. Smith, our Locked On Recruiting Insider here at the network, brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. Brian, thanks as always. Thank you, sir. Appreciate everyone listening. I'll see you next time. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, go Ducks.